Good day Grade 12s. Welcome to your next lesson in Finance, Growth and Decay. In this lesson we're going to be looking at sinking funds. Now sinking funds are part of a group of annuities. And annuities is really just like a financial plan. Um, so sinking fund is a type of annuity in which money is invested in order to buy equipment in the future. There are two types of annuities. There's the future value annuities and then there are the present value annuities. The future value annuities are used for investments, savings and sinking funds for example. In other words, we don't have the money yet. We're saving up for it or we're investing in a pension plan so that in 20 or 30 years time we can retire and have lots of money or we're saving up for our dream holiday. That is a future value annuity. We don't have the money yet. A present value annuity is used for bonds and loans. There they've given us the money, the bank has loaned us the money or they've given us the bond money to buy a house or a car or taken out a loan and now we need to pay it back. So that's the difference between the future value annuities and the bonds now and the present value. We're looking in this lesson at sinking funds which are specifically savings accounts in order to replace equipment in the future. The future value formula is such, f of v is equal to x times by y plus, I mean 1 plus i to the n minus 1 all over i, where f of v is your future value, x is the money invested every period, whether it be quarterly, monthly, annually, whatever, i is your interest rate and n is your number of payments. Now don't freak out, please don't freak out, this formula is on the formula sheet. All you need to know is how to use it. So let's do a couple of examples. So the first example says a company needs to accumulate a hundred thousand rand over three years in order to replace the office equipment. The interest rate is five percent per annum compounded quarterly. What payments must be made every quarter? So we've got the formulas on the formula sheet. You just need to recognize that future value is equal to x times by one plus i to the n minus one over i. Now let's see what information they gave us. They told us they want to accumulate 100,000 Rand. So in the future, they want to have 100,000 Rand available to them. Their number of years is three years. The number of years is three years. But the interest rate is 5% per annum compounded quarterly. So that's 0 0.05 over four, because it's quarterly. And since the interest rate is compounded quarterly, that means our payments are going to be quarterly as well. And it gives you another trick. It says what payments should be made every quarter. There you go. Four. So therefore, the total number of payments we're making is three times four, which is 12. So now what we're going to do is substitute all this in to find out the amount of payments, which is our x. Okay. So let's go through this. We've got 100,000 is equal to x times by 1 plus i, which is 0 0.05 over 4, that's all in a bracket, to the power of 12 minus 1, all over the interest, which is 0 0.05 over 4. So first I'm going to do is obviously we want to get x by itself, but so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this. To get rid of this, I can just times both sides by 0 0.05 over 4. So I get 100,000 times by 0 0.05 over 4 is equal to x and this still becomes 1 plus 0 0.05 over 4 all to the power of 12 minus 1. So we can use our calculator now and we can just clear it from its previous calculations so we can nice clear thing. So we got 100,000, 1, 2, 1, 3, yep times 0 0.05 equals divided by 4 equals 1250. So 1250, let me try again, 1250 is equal to x times by, let's put this in the calculator and see what it gets to. It comes to, okay let's clear, so we've got 0 0.05 divided by 4, then we add 1, then we take it all to the power of 12 and we subtract 1 and we end up with 0 0.16, 0 0.16, 0 0.16. So to get x what are we going to do? We're going to divide both of these sides by 0 0.16, 0 0.16 and these
please cancel. So therefore, your x is going to equal 1250 divided by 0.16, and we end up with 7,812 and 50 cents. 7,812 and 50 cents, which is a quite a big amount of money to be paying per month, but we are trying to get up to 100,000 Rand in three years with just 5% per annum compounded quarterly. So, fair enough. Let's look at another example. Okay, a school buys a phot photocopier for 80,000 Rand, whether it's one or two, I'm not sure, but they realize that they will need to replace the machine in five years' time. The inflation rate is 7.5% per annum, and the present equipment will depreciate on a reducing balance of 5% per annum. Okay, so let's go through the questions. It first says, find the value of a new machine in five years' time. Find the value of a new machine in five years' time. So let's think about this. We know that inflation rate is a compound interest, because we learned that last year, and it makes sense. So A is equal to P, 1 plus I to the power of N. So, therefore, we can say, okay, the principal is the amount of money we currently paid for it, which was 80,000 Rand, 1 plus the interest rate, luckily it is just per annum, so it's going to be 0 0.075, and then the number of years is 5. So, we can pop that in our calculator, and we can move the calculator over, and we can go right. 0.075 plus 1, all to the power of 5, times by 80, 1, 2, 3, equals 114,850 and 35 cents. So that becomes 114,850 and 35 cents. So what does that mean? That means that in five years, in five years, I will have to pay out we have to pay out the equivalent of R114850.35. Okay, that's what a new machine is going to cost me in five years. Now it says find the scrap value of the current machine in five years' time. Okay, so let's change the color. Now we've got what? A reducing balance depreciation. A reducing balance depreciation. And this time it's 5% per annum. Okay, so therefore we've got A equals P 1 minus I to the power of N. Again, this time your principal is going to be 80,000 because that's what we paid originally. 1 minus 0 0.05 all to the power of 5. So, if we get out our calculator and we clear stuff, we can go 1 minus 0 0.05 equals 0 0.95 all to the power of 5. And then we times it by 80, 1, 2, 3. And that is 61,902 and 48 cents. 61,000. 902 and 48 cents. 61,902 and 48 cents. In other words, if we had to sell in five years' time, the selling price, the selling price of our old photocopier, old photocopier is going to be what? It is going to be 6,000, sorry, 61,902 and 48 cents. Excellent. Let's see what else they ask us. Now they say calculate the amount of money needed to buy a new machine if you sold the old one. Like if you trade in the old one. Okay, if you trade in the old one. And I'm actually going to erase this so we can actually see what it says. And because I've written the numbers at the top there. So do you agree that the total amount of money that I need to buy the new machine, if I didn't have an old machine to trade in, in five years time, would be 114,850.35 cents. 
but I'm going to be trading my old photocopier and I'm going to get for it 61902 and 48 cents. So therefore the amount of money I have to raise is the difference between the two. I just have to subtract them. So let's get out my calculator and we go well. That is 114850.35 minus 61902.38 and I get at 52,947 52,947 and 87 cents 52,947 and 82 cents so that's 52,947 and 87 cents that's how much money I have to now save that's what I need to save for so the question now is calculate how much money must be paid into sinking fund monthly if the interest rate is 13% per annum compounded monthly in order to buy the new machine in five years time so now we're going to be using this formula our future value the amount of money we need to raise is 52,947.87 cents X is what we're trying to find out. It's how much we need to save each month. Our interest is 13% per annum, 0.13, but it's compounded monthly, so we're going to divide by 12. Our N is the number of payments, and we're saving for five years, but it's compounded monthly, and there are 12 months a year, so that's going to be 60. So now we can put all that in a calculation. We can say, right, we've got F of V which is 52,947.87 is equal to x times by 1 plus interest 0.13 over 12 all to the power of 60 minus 1 all over 0.13 over 12 right so again we want to get x to it by itself so what are we going to do we're going to multiply this side by the denominator so we've got 52,947.87 times by 0.13 over 12 is equal to x times by bracket 1 plus 0.13 over 12 all to the 60 minus 1 right get out our calculator trusty steed, our trusty calculator, and we multiply, so let's just clear, so we've got 52,947.87 times by 0.13 equals divided by 12 equals, so that's 573.60, 573.60 equals x times by, let's see what this is, so it's going to be 0.13 divided by 12, add 1 to the power of 60, less 1 is 0 0.91, 0 0.91. So now what we need to do is divide both of these by 0 0.91 to solve for x. Therefore, we have that x is equal to, and we get it out again, and we've got 573.6, oopsie, that didn't go point, point 0.6, divided by 0.91 equals 630.33, 630, 630.33. So that's not too bad, hey? So that you could put away for five years to get your 52,947.87. But I must admit this 13% per annum compound monthly is a really good interest rate. Very few places give that interest rate these days. And that grade 12 is how you use sinking funds. Please understand that this question here that I've broken up into bits, they might be mean and nasty and just ask this. They might say, calculate how much money be paid into sinking fund monthly if the interest rate is water, water, water. And you need to know that you need to work out the inflation rate, you need to work out the depreciation, you need to work out the difference to find out what you're actually saving towards, and then work out what your monthly payments are. So you need to know that this needs to be done. Obviously, this will be a huge question in the exams. It'll be like, I don't know, seven to eight marks at least. 
so please go practice this. This is actually a very nice question. It's nice and easy to do if you break it up into its baby steps and its mega marks. Please go practice. Have a lovely day. Cheers.